Since its release in 2019, Netflix's The Witcher has become one of the best page-to-screen medieval fantasy adaptations out there. And in today's video, we're going to be going behind the scenes with an image from the sets of the third season, among other things, of course. Brace yourselves. We're about to sustain you through the dark times where this show will be off-air. First up, image released from the sets of The Witcher Season 3. After surprising fans with perhaps one of the best plot twists on the show to date in the second season's finale, The Witcher is all set to pick up where it left off. Yeah, you guessed it. Filming for the third season is successfully underway. While the creators haven't breathed a word about the release dates, they've decided not to keep the fans in the dark about other things. Simply put, to mark the occasion of the resumption, they've not only released an official synopsis, but also an image to accompany it. So hold your roaches, if you know what we mean, anyways. We'll get to the blur breakdown only after we uh, thoroughly unpack the picture. So let's get right into the picture. At first glance, it reveals the show's staple characters. Geralt, Ciri, and Yennefer, eh, to be exact, reclining in some folding chairs with a a wintry landscape a short distance away. This landscape, and we're going off some rumors posted by a fan site here, might be located somewhere in Slovenia. Any hoozles. Upon further inspection, the image showcases that the actors, although Anya Celotra and Freya Allen have their backs to us, are in their trademark costumes. To elaborate, Yen and Siri are wearing gowns in their characteristic shades of purple and blue. Oh, just the thought of those colors bringing out the beauty of their eyes makes me blush. Uh, uh, sorry. Anyways, <laughs> try not to get distracted here. Coming back to the picture, Cavill, of course, still hard not to get distracted, is dressed all in black, and he sits sideways facing what appears to be a rundown shack. Now, while we're not aware of the shack's relevance, there is one detail which we feel uh, <coughs> fully equipped to comment on. And no, it's not the filming equipment. We, we, we wouldn't know that microphone in that corner from a spotlight, even if our life depended on it. The deet, which is in Wizards of the Continent, is on the horse, which, unless the show decides to go back in time, is gonna be replacing Roach, Geralt's dead mare, as his new steed. We hope this new one's just as dependable as our good old boy Roach. So now that we've given you the scoop on the picture, let's dive into the official summary. But be warned, lots of theorizing is also involved here. So next up, we have the official synopsis on certain theories. So it turns out that this season is going to be really heavily focusing on one of the show's most noticeable themes, family. At least that's what we picked up on the official summary. To begin with, it teases the idea of the recently reunited trio taking on several adversaries to avoid losing each other forever. What trio, you might be asking? Hermione, Harry, and Ron. <laughs> Duh. Now we're talking to Sir. Rilla, Geralt, and Yen here. So, what's with the riddles? Ah, get, like, rid like Tom Riddle? Do you get that? Uh, okay, I tried. All jokes aside, the blur makes it seem like all of the continent species are out for Ciri's blood, be it corrupt politicians, of which her dad happens to be, the mages, or the bloodthirsty beasts. Everybody wants some of that sweet elder blood. However, we think that the political corruption, dark magic, and treachery hinted in the synopsis will only begin to take shape in some of the later episodes. Well, why? Uh, because we got a feeling that Ciri's stand-in parents are going to try and hide her in a different realm. Okay, okay, before you scoff at this line of thought, let's remind you what happened before, even though, like, really briefly in The Wild Hunt. And since we're on the subject of theories, another one of our hunches, or I, I guess fears, is that Yen is going to stow Siri away yet again and use her untapped powers to her benefit. Which, given her previous record, is unfortunately likely. We mean, even Henry Cavill thinks the character's troublesome dynamic with the sorceress is going to require a lot of time to change. To quote, it's a fairly extreme set of circumstances to come back from. Speaking of dynamics, the show, and this has been confirmed by the showrunner Lauren Schmidt Hisrich herself, will spend a lot of time exploring Amir slash Dooney's relationship with his daughter and a new partner to come in season three. Apart from this, she's revealed that the show will be borrowing from the particular novel in the Witcher saga, which as far as we know, is the second installment of the book series, titled Time of Contempt. Now, since not all fans have the spoons for an eight-book saga, here's what that means for the show. Now, how Time of Contempt will influence the third season. Although the previous these two seasons took several liberties with their source materials, that is, The Last Wish and The Sword of Destiny, the season might stick to them more religiously. To explain what we just said, Hisbridge has expressed in one of her interviews that Time of Contempt was an easy book in terms of adaptability. Thus, all of its jaw-dropping actions might be included in the scripts. So, you want to know what that implies? Go read the book! Nah, I'm just kidding. We wouldn't make you do that. <laughs> Plain and simple, it means that if the on-screen adaptations remain true to the novel, then the trio is going to be torn apart once again, sending Geralt on a quest-come-search operation of sorts to reunite them. On top of that, we're gonna get to see some new fantastical locations and villains and allies as well. This talk of new characters reminds us that the previously mentioned fan site, Redanian Intelligence, once released information on castings being underway for a villain by the name of Professor, who, if we remember correctly, is an assassin with prior appearances in the franchise game of the same exact name. 
Another character who might be added to the show's ever-growing mystical cast is called Milva, an archer who will help Geralt find Ciri for, what, like the third time now? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's the third time. Now that you're no longer in oblivion, oh, I'm sorry, that was a really bad one, about the news released an image in the official plotline, let's charge headlong into some other related news. Adjoa Ando might not return for the season three. Despite Cavill's desire to continue to share the screen with her character in some of his interviews, Ando, who plays Neneke, is afraid that she might not be coming back for season three. Her worries, as she explained to Radio Times, stems from how diverse the books are. To quote her indirectly, while her character does appear frequently throughout the later installments of the saga, the showrunner's version of it might utilize the materials differently. Here's hoping that they find a way to include her in the third season because Cavill is not the only one who wants to have more frames with her. We'd pick her over Jeskier's shenanigans any single day of the week. Uh, speaking of Jeskier, you haven't heard of him the last time either and his annoying songs just yet. His switch explains Jeskier's role in the upcoming season. You might have caught his switch addressing fans' queer on Twitter shortly after the second season came to a close, and if you did, you might already be aware of where Jeskier lies in the scheme of the third installment. For those of you who missed it though, allow us to borrow Lauren's words to explain this. He's been in it since the beginning. To elaborate on that, she added, since Jeskier got to interact individually with all three of the main characters, he simply can't be written off. In fact, the bonds he's formed in Season 2 will be further built upon in the upcoming storyline. Perhaps, and if the theory about the trio's separation stands the test of time, we'll get to see him and Geralt working together in the spirit of the show's debut episodes. So, if you're wondering how the Jeskier actor Joey Beatty feels about the whole thing, as per one interview, he's ready to follow his switch to the ends of the earth. And it appears to us that him and Jeskier aren't entirely different when it comes to tagging alongside people. Jokes aside, now that we've revealed the fate of some of the old characters, it's time to unveil the newest additions to the show's cast as well. New additions to the cast. The previous season gave us loads of new faces to drool over, and believe it or not, the third is following suit. As for who we're going to be meeting this season, let's list their names and roles one by one, in no particular order. First up, we've got Robbie Amell of Upload fame playing Gaiatin. No, 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 not Guillotine. Gaiatin, the head of the guerrilla army facing for Nilfgaard. And besides his name, which we've established would make for an excellent pun, we know that he's a born fighter who ends up beefing with Francesca because of power imbalances. Secondly, we got Hugh Skinner. Yeah, the bus rodent from Fleabag. And we got him playing Radovid. He's a prince who has great political insights and a bit of a drunk charm, with which he works his way into the Redanian intelligence. The description for him also says that he's quite attractive. A welcome change from his toothy character on Fleabag, if you ask us. Thirdly, as we've hinted at before, there's Menger Zhang as Milva. Yes, it's the same Zhang as in Shang-Chi. Uh, adding to her character profile from before, she's grown up under the wing of the dryads of the Rokelong Forest and is an excellent huntress. And finally, we have Christelle Elwin appearing as Missile, a Robin Hood-like gang member who steals from the rich to give to the poor. But on the downside, she's actually really the suspicious and bent-on-revenge type as well. And that's a wrap for this video. See you guys in the next one for this video.